Good evening. Good evening. Happy whatever today is Sunday to everybody. My name is Daniel Wise. For those of you that haven't been here before, also known as RDAP Dan. Don't forget to subscribe, share, like, all that good stuff, guys. We're going to start in a few minutes here. We're running a few minutes ahead of schedule, which is normally the opposite. We're usually a couple minutes behind schedule. I have it as 657. So we'll get started in about two minutes. So everybody take a moment, go ahead and get your coffee, or in my case, your green drink, drinking some swamp water tonight. Hope everybody had a good weekend. Over here in South Florida, it's beautiful, it's nice and cool, definitely enjoying the weather. Did not get outside very much today, I'm not going to lie. I've been, uh, been working on some videos, editing, and we have a lot of people that are actually self-surrendering in February. So we've been prepping, or I'm sorry, getting sentenced in February. So we've been getting ready with letters and whatnot. What do we got in the room while I'm waiting? Charmed One, thank you very much for joining us. Bonnie, as always. Hey, Richard, welcome, Richard. So we're going to talk a little bit. I know a lot of you are asking questions. There's certain things you want me to answer. Um, we I, Just so mark this on your calendar, guys. Tuesday, day after tomorrow at noon, we're going to be doing another live video with Tom Root. And we're really going to be answering a lot of questions. As we know, uh, the vaccine is being administered in some of the locations, uh, not in a large, large quantity, but we know that it is being administered in locations. So we're going to talk a lot about, is it mandatory? What happens if you don't take it? How can it affect things like compassionate release? Uh, th these are going to be some topics we talk about next Tuesday or this coming Tuesday at noon. So mark it on your calendar. I'll probably post that video or, the, or put the schedule of the video on tomorrow so you'll at least see it on YouTube and you can, you know, uh, ding it there and lock it in. Got about another minute. Don't forget, also text the word YouTube to 76626. If you have not already done so, that will put you on our text message service. It's uh, it, Most of you have unlimited text, I'm assuming, so it should be free for most of you. You'll get a, a text about 20 to 30 minutes before we go live, and you'll be able to click on the link, and that will allow you to watch it either on your mobile device if you're out and about or you don't have your alerts turned on. I also recommend turning on your alerts on YouTube. This way you don't miss any of our content that we put out. Try to put out a couple videos a week surrounding pr preparing for federal prison, uh, coming home from federal prison, qualifying for the residential drug addiction program like RDAP, sentence reduction, what you can do to potentially reduce your sentence before you go to prison, uh, above and beyond what your plea agreement might be or, or what's being recommended. Um, so yes, so with that said, let's go ahead and jump into the video here. Uh, and there's already, you guys are already in here chatting it up pretty good. I can see some of the questions. Um, you know, basically the topic today is, is should inmates receive the vaccine or have the ability to receive the vaccine before teachers and nurses? I imagine there's going to be some controversial decision-making on that as far as how you guys sway, whether it's one way or the other. Uh, you know, I can't say who deserves it more. I know CDC is putting out that inmates should definitely be getting this and staff members in prison should definitely be getting this. I think they're even saying above teachers and nurses, doctors, professionals, things like that, people that are high risk uh, out in the field. Why is that? Uh, we actually, we can jump over here. And you'll see, this is from a website prisonpolicy.org. A lot of good information on here, guys. There's also a link to it in the description of the video if you want to go check out their website. Um, they've actually got an article in here. Incarcerated people and correction staff should be prioritizing COVID-19 vaccine plans. And it kind of goes into why. Uh, by any reasonable standard, incarcerated people should rank high on every state's priority list. COVID-19 uh, case rate is four times higher in state and federal prisons than in general population. So basically it's saying People that are in prison or state jail, county jail, whatever it might be, are four times higher at risk than everybody else, including teachers, doctors, nurses, uh, some even the elderly. You know, most people have the ability to self-quarantine if they want to. They have the ability to, you know, mask up more often. They have the ability to 
to use more hand, uh, hand sanitizer. They're usually in cleaner environments. So I imagine, you know, teachers and nurses and things like this, even though they are at high risk, they do have the ability to, to take more preventative measures than your typical inmate. Whether you agree with that or not, that's entirely up to you. But if you want to, the, the, like I said, the link to this article is in the link of this video. If you want to go read through this on your own or maybe hop on some other ones and share something with us, I would love for you guys to post in the comments of the video uh, what your take is on this and why you think or don't think that inmates should be at a higher level of priority. Yeah, let's bounce back over here. Let's see. Antoinette, welcome. I think inmates who are close to being released should get the vaccine, but it's for getting it before teachers and nurses. I don't know. I'm right there with you. I, I don't know either. Um, and a lot of people are asking, is it going to be mandatory? Uh, from my understanding, I received two emails over the weekend from clients that are in two different locations. Uh, one of them is at, uh, oh, geez, I forgot now. Um, Sean Sultan, which, uh, which you guys have seen, he's got a blog on our website. He has taken the vaccine, and I believe he said it is not mandatory that you put yourself on a list if you want to take it. Now, the question is going to raise, a lot of you are going to be interested in things like compassionate release because maybe you're at high risk, but you still don't want to take the vaccine because you don't trust it, and you're thinking maybe you could qualify for like a compassionate release, so how's that going to be affected if you choose not to take the vaccine and you're trying to qualify for compassionate release and the government comes back and gets word from the BOP that you turn down the vaccine, or if you take the vaccine, how's that going to, going to affect the possibility of something like compassionate release? Again, Tuesday at noon, day after tomorrow, noon Eastern time, we're going to be live with Tom Root, who's an expert on this topic, and he's going to be going through his belief system on this and, and what he thinks uh, the proper measures to take should be to put you in the best possible situation to receive that best possible outcome for whatever it is you might be looking at. They should be prioritized based on the science. Okay. You know, I'm not a big fan of the whole like science topic. A lot of people like to throw that out. The science, the science, the science, and you know, uh, you know, science is science, but there's been different theories and different versions of what the science says and there's different narratives that are kind of forced on us from whatever they're building towards a narrative so i don't want to get too political with all this but i hear what you're saying i hear what you're saying derek <coughs> um a lot of people were thinking that the vaccine wasn't going to be available for inmates for a long time we thought maybe the staff would get it first, which the staff is getting it first, but we're still thinking that a lot of these inmates that are taking it are the prisons that, you know, they, they've ordered whatever amount of vaccines they think they're going to take, and then staff maybe refuses it or opts out to take it, and there's leftovers, and there's a shelf life on these vaccines, so they administer it to the inmates based on however they're determining that. I can tell you Sean Sultan, who's one of our clients, is not at high risk for COVID, and he received the vaccine. So I'm not sure how they are doling this out in different prisons, but I think different prisons might be running it uh, different ways. Now, we do know if anybody's ever been into a prison, we know that it's, I mean, if you just look at this picture, this kind of sums it up right here, boom. If you just look at this and uh, imagine trying to stay, trying to social distance in an environment like this. I mean, what are you really supposed to do? You're like sardines on top of each other, literally. Bunk beds packed in, you know, very little space in between. You can only keep it so clean. You know, how clean can you really keep this? And they don't give inmates like an abundance of bleach and sanitizer. Uh, you know, inmate might, might be able to get a little bit of bleach here and there or sneak some and do a little extra cleaning. But for the most part, prison systems in general, state and feds, are not the most sanitary environment and they're not well ventilated. Uh, there's not a lot of ventilation going on in here. There's not a lot of big open windows. It's very closed in. Uh, it can smell bad in there. Or you'll usually find mold. Uh, the inmates try to keep it as clean as possible. We all want to live in a clean environment, but we're kind of, we have to reform to using some very basic, basic uh, cleaning products, which are, because they don't want you getting bleach or you can throw it in someone's face or find a way to get high with it. So a lot of the chemicals that they're using are very mild, watered down chemicals. So, you know, look at that environment. I wouldn't want to be in that environment right now. Now, where I was at Coleman Low wasn't like this. I mean, we were in one big room all together, 
but it was set up more like a cubicle structure where there was concrete cubicles. And uh, I can probably find you a picture of that, what that looks like. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's not the most desirable sleeping quarters. And I'll pull that up while we're waiting here. Federal prison cubicles. Let's see what we get. There we go. Came right up. Okay. So we'll pop back over here just for one second. That's not the best picture. I guess we'll have to do. So you can see up at the top right hand corner of your screen. Uh, that is what it looks like as far as those are what cubes look like. When you talk about in a federal prison camp or low, these are the cubicles. There's usually three beds in there. You'll see the bunk beds, which you see right there. Um, and then you'll also to the left of that, there's usually going to be a single bed. So you get usually your single bed, your two bunk beds and like a little area for your lockers and whatnot. Uh, again, it'd be real hard to, to self quarantine in there and make it a safe environment and truly keep it clean. It's not somewhere I would want to be during COVID right now. And I don't know about the rest of you, but it doesn't look like the best of spots to be. Our health should not be political. Don't apologize. I appreciate that charmed one. Staff first, since they'll be bringing it in. I, I, I can agree with that. You know, staff come and go. So staff should definitely be up on that list. Uh, they'd be easiest population. Now, again, it's not mandatory. So you have staff that don't want to take it. So it can still be brought into the system. Um, this is going to be a real, real touchy, a real touchy issue for a long time, I think. And then we're going to see different strands coming in. But the big question is, is how is this going to affect other options? How's it going to affect programming, RDAP? Um, I know everybody's got questions on the First Step Act and and how that's going to roll out, what that's going to look like um, as far as your earn time credits. And we've got that thing down to damn near a good science on how your earn time credits are going to be adjusted. But I can tell you, it's not in favor for you guys. I promise you that. Those of you that I think you're going to get a year or two years off with programming credits on the earn time credits in addition to your good time, you're in for a rude awakening because the way they're going to do this, it's going to be real hard to get that 10 to 15 days per month based on how they're going to calculate how many hours you actually program in a 30 day period. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, John Goff, what's going on, John? Dan, is there a possibility of having a wing of those that choose to take the vaccine and a wing of the, uh, I don't know, man. I, I don't know if they've got it. I, I think they're still figuring out like how it's going to work, but I know from what a couple of my uh, clients have told me that are inside is that there's a list, a sign up list for those that are interested in taking the vaccine and we have another client who you guys also saw on here. Um, oh, man, I'm so bad with that. Eric. Eric, uh, I think it was last name in a second. Eric, who also did a video with us. He was the, I believe he was the accountant. Uh, Kettlar, Eric Kettlar. He's on the list right now. I think he says he's supposed to get his vaccine next week. And again, he's not super risk either, but he's going to be getting his. These are both rather young guys. They're, I would say, my age that are getting the vaccine right now, which is interesting to me. Uh, what's going on, Juan Carlos? Free C murder. Welcome, my man. In New Jersey, you get a card when you get both shots. What do you mean you get a card? Guys, if you didn't give me a thumbs up yet or a nice like on this, just get out of, get out of the room now. Or a thumbs down. I'll even take a thumbs down. You can give a thumbs down if you don't want to give a thumbs up. But really, this video is to kind of lead you guys into what we're doing uh, next week with Tom. Uh, Tom's been Tom's been diving into this basically on a daily basis, watching the numbers, watching the stats, reading what the uh, the DOJ is putting out, how we think this is going to, what we think the future of this is going to be. So we're really trying to predict as much as we can to help you all best prepare for this journey that you're going on. Uh, when you hear me talk about my prison experience, and I was overwhelmingly positive, and I was able to do all of these positive affirmations in there and life transformations and taking classes and focusing on my release, preparing with an awesome release plan, getting in shape, healthy, mental, programming, taking classes, working, all of these things I was able to do to really like maximize and utilize my time. 
This is not something that a lot of you are going to be able to do right now in federal prison or state prison or county jail uh, due to this unknown level of what to expect from COVID and no one knows how to deal with it yet. And people are definitely terrified of the media and what media thinks. So we're, it's a combination of what the reality of this, what this is really doing and what they need to do for illusions, right? So what do we need to do to make it look like they're trying? All of this stuff is creating kind of a backlog of, of everything. Uh, I know where Sean Sultan is. RDAP is running. He's in RDAP, uh, Lewisburg. Uh, Lewisburg camp. I know RDAP is running right there. He sends me an email every single day, which is lovely. I love it. Talks about everything he's doing. What time he's doing RDAP, when he's doing his burpees. I mean, he, he covers the board. A smorgasbord of everything that he's doing is, is laid out in there. Uh, saying you got the shot so you can cab travel at Philadelphia Airport. Incentivize inoculation should be a condition of employment travel. Philly, New York is making it a rule to get vaccine to travel to an airport. Yeah, you know... Um, I don't know. I don't know if I agree with that. I don't know if you should make somebody get vaccinated to get on an airplane. Uh, it should be people's choice, I think. And, you know, maybe you sign something saying, I realize I'm getting on a flight with people that may not be vaccinated. Uh, there's some people that can't vaccinate. You know, there's some people that are going to be allergic to it. So um, I don't know if I want to get vaccinated. I, I've never taken a flu shot before. Uh, I don't know that I want to go get this vaccine. I definitely don't want to get it right now. I'm going to let other people take it first. Um, so I'm drinking my green drink right here. Stay healthy, guys. A lot of us don't have the healthiest lifestyles either, you know, and it's a lot easier. We, we're more susceptible to, you know, germs and, and, and diseases and things like COVID. Uh, so I'm not ready to take mine. I can tell you that. Uh, what was what was Carlos? One Carlos saying seems like most of the vaccines that inmates are getting are ones guards are turning down so they don't spoil. You're correct, Juan. And that's, we're going to be going to a much deeper dive on that uh, Tuesday at noon with Tom Eastern time. So you should chime in on that Juan, so you can ask some questions. No, not incentivized. We should have control over our own bodies. See, this is, this is where you're going to go back and forth. You've got, you know, uh, charmed one who I can also agree with and Derek, who can I also can agree. I, I can see where people are coming from from their own personal beliefs. And that's the problem is we're going to invoke and put our own personal beliefs into this. What's the best thing for everybody? Well, I don't know. I don't think any of us actually know that yet. And for somebody to say, you know, follow the science. Well, I don't think science knows yet. You know, I don't think science can come out and definitively say vaccinations are the best thing for humanity right now. Um, sure, they're pushing the vaccines, but this it's also political. It's also an agenda uh, that plays a part of it. And we have to take that into consideration, too, is are they pushing something on us for an agenda or are they pushing on us for the betterment of humanity? That's going to be the loaded question, right? That's the million dollar question that we all want. You know, if the vaccine was really the perfect thing and it was, you know, side effects were, were known and there was no bad side effects and it was in a perfect world. Sure. Stick it in me. Well, it sounds bad the way I say that, but take, give me the vaccine. Um, so, sorry, I can't rock with the nonsense. You know, and this is the thing. People will definitely get in their feelings. Uh, people will get in their feelings when you go against what they think or what they say. Uh, you will see people that will will kind of lose interest in what you're talking about. And, you know, I, I don't think anybody has the definitive answers on this. You know, and I see people get upset all day, every day. And it's a very, you know, it's, it's a very trying time. People are out of work. People are losing money. People are stuck at home. Uh, you have all kinds of mental health skyrocketing through the roof. You have, think about, think about women that, you know, get knocked around by their husbands or boyfriends that had the ability to leave before, or they were going to work, or their husbands were going to work, or their boyfriend was going to work, at least at that time away. Now you've got people like stuck in confinement together and they're not working or they're all working from home taking a daily whipping or something, you know, it's uh, this COVID has really, really, really caused a ripple effect through our, I don't want to say through the country, through the world. Uh, Juan Carlos, when I wanted to turn down a vaccine, when I only had 11 days to go, they said I had to go to the, the hole. I didn't want the vaccine. Was a, so did you get the vaccine Juan Carlos or no? <laughs> 
But this is a very emotional conversation, guys. This is a very emotional conversation. It can get extremely heated. People, you know, the thing is, you got to take your feelings out of it. At the end of the day, nobody gives a fuck about your feelings, right? That This isn't about your feelings or, or what you think or what I think. It's about what you're going to do for yourself or what are they going to force us to do? And is, is somebody forcing something on you in your best interest? And who gets to determine what's in your best interest? You or somebody else. Um, I am not a fan of letting somebody determine what's in my best interest. Granted, I may not always make the best choices. Clearly, I went to federal prison, which says that some of my best thinking was bad, or else I wouldn't have been there. But at the end of the day, I'm just reading. Sorry. It's crazy. You mentioned the word China, and it automatically it flagged the comment and made me review it and approve it because he had the word China. This is, this is we live in a very censored world right now. People get all upset about Facebook censoring things. Remember, Facebook is not freedom of speech. Facebook is an owned a company. So if they want to tell you what you can and can't say, I mean, create your own fucking Facebook. You know, do what you want. Uh, if YouTube wants to kick off videos and censor things, I mean, they own the platform. They can determine what you can and can't say. You can get upset about it. You can get in your feelings about it. But at the end of the day, it's not going to do any good. You know, you hear people say, oh, I'm going off Facebook and I'm never using it again. It's usually the guy that's on Facebook 10 minutes later. Um, it, it, this is just going to be uh, an insane amount of time that we're going through. And this is why it's so important with the work we do here at Federal Prison Time Consulting is because my job is not to become overly emotional about what's right and what's wrong or what I think is right and what I think is wrong. At the end of the day, we have to look at what recipe can we use that is going to put you in the best situation to receive the best possible outcome. It's ultimately going to be up to you to take the road that you want to take. Our job is to give you advice based on what we've seen work for other people. And then it's your job to do your homework and do uh, due diligence on what you think is going to work best for you. For those of you out there right now that are considering possible compassionate release or you're talking to an attorney or you're talking to another consultant that's telling you they can help you with it, I'm telling you, in the let's go over to let's go over to R. Dan's website for a second, guys. Um, if you come over to my website, federalprisontime.com, which you see on your screen right now, you will see in the very beginning of the page, it's gonna say start here, that little white button. If you just click on that white button, Start here. Put your information in there, your name, your last name, your email, your phone number, point of contact, you know, in case you might be going into prison, you want us to contact like your wife or your husband or your brother or sister, whatever it is. Uh, street address, city, and you can put in a fake address if you don't want to give me all that personal information yet. Zip code, federal or state, provide a little brief description of what your situation is. You go through your legal phase, indicted, not indicted, done your PSR, whatever it is. If you have an appointed attorney or a private attorney, your time zone, um, how you found us, and then give us a little consent. And what this is going to do is it's going to give us some information about your case. Then it's going to prompt you to the calendar, and you're going to book a free consultation where you'll be speaking with myself, and depending on what service you're looking for, myself and or Tom Root, where we can actually walk you through a potential roadmap of what you can try to do to best position yourself. Uh, it's extremely important. So again, if you're looking right now, if you're interested in like, uh, compassionate release, because that's something that everybody's interested in right now. If you're already talking to somebody and you might want to check around, shop around a little bit, because you never know what somebody's telling you is accurate. We've had a few individuals that were actually going with another consultant. And after they had left us and decided to hire this other person, came back to us because this person really fed them a bunch of BS or hyped it up and really built it to be like this kind of slam dunk magic pill and left out a lot of what else could happen if didn't things didn't go through, and it really left the door wide open for failure uh, to the point where the motion that was created, their attorney read the motion. It was like, I'm not filing this. Uh, it looks like it was written by you know a chop shop. So you want to make sure you're doing your homework on this, and you're not just going with the first person you talk to, including myself. If I'm the first person you spoke to, I don't blame you for for shopping this around. Not just based, and obviously. If you're basing it solely on price, well, you might get what you pay for um, or you might get lucky, right?
But if you're shopping around and you're basing it on, you know, you're, you know what questions to ask, I can promise you if you talk to us, we're at the very least going to give you a the best case scenario, the average case scenario, and the worst case scenario. But we are not going to promise you a pie in the sky. Uh, you're going to know what you're getting before you get off the phone with us. And you're not going to have questions about, you know, what if this happens or what if that happens? We're going to walk through the scenarios with you and, and map it out so you have a clear understanding of what you could potentially expect. So definitely do your homework, guys. Don't just jump on the first wagon you see. Always turn down. Uh, they said I could get it hep from sharing. Whoops. Richard, why well, live in New Jersey, New York, and it's becoming mandatory? They want you to get it before you work. It's heading in that direction around here. Well, I'm staying away from New York and New Jersey. My daughters are flying here. Uh, I just got them tickets. My younger daughter is turning 19 at the end of March, and my older daughter is flying up with her and two of their friends. Yeah, so all four of them are going to be coming up, staying for a few days. Uh, I got them an Airbnb. They can't stay with me. It's, it's too many teenage adults in one house. So I got them an Airbnb, but they're flying up from New York and New Jersey, so they're going through all that right now. Like, you know, They don't have to be vaccinated, but they do have to take a test. I'm going to do some research on that because I don't think they can make you get a vaccine in order to do anything. Um, I know schools that can make you do like certain vaccines, but I don't think they can make you get a vaccine to get on a plane. Um, if so, I guess it's going to be a lot of road trips for me because you're not going to dangle a carrot in front of me to make me get a vaccine so I can have the, the complacency of knowing that I can fly on an airplane. Hey, blackmail somebody else. Not our death, Dan. And that pisses people off for some reason because that's my belief on it. I don't, I'm not saying you should or shouldn't do that. That's just what I prefer to do. So, you know, that's the fun thing about um, A, having your own business and B, having your own channel uh, because I don't have to censor what I want to do or what I want to say. Now, YouTube can censor me, but I don't have to be overly thoughtful of am I going to get fired for saying this? Am I going to rub some people the wrong way? Is somebody not going to hire me because they don't agree with my with my thought process? Hey, if you want to go such tit for tat and maybe screw up what could be the best service for you just because we have different views on things, this is what people have to learn. People have to learn how to get together. We're not always going to agree, but we can have conversations. I can hear you out. You can hear me out. Maybe you'll change my mind. Maybe I'll change your mind. Or maybe we'll just agree that we have different views, but we can still be friends or we can still be you know, uh, or you can still be a client with a awesome consultant. You have to be able to work things out. Not everything is going to be perfect. And always, if you're always going to look for the people that agree with you or, or look and sound like you, you're kind of getting, this is what got us a lot of into this situation to begin with is making these irrational. It's such an irrational approach to think that your way is the right way. And there's no other way. Um, you know, whether it's religion, whether it's politics, whether it's COVID-19, it's, the political craziness behind this is really what spews most of the energy, and that's probably what spewed the damn election in either direction. It doesn't matter who would have won. It wouldn't have been based on truly good versus evil. It would have been based on which media outlet did a better sales pitch for us, and we see this in the federal system all the time. We see this in courts. I'm dealing with a client right now. This is, this is how crazy some of these court systems are in the government. We have a client that is a... Uh, there's there's tax fraud going on and he was able to prove much of what they were saying basically he would the government was saying that he did all these different things cash 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 that was never reported well he was able to go back and prove that a it wasn't cash and when it was cash it was reported on taxes he was able to go back and prove this many times and the government kept going okay well they started reading reducing his points a little bit reducing his his offense level it got to the point where he kept going back to them they said look enough you come to us with anything else, all bets are off the table. We're not going any lower than this, even though he has proof that the numbers that they're using are not accurate. Uh, this is what we're up against. You know, those are the things that we should all be banding together about, not who's going to take the damn vaccine or not. Uh, that's the real problem is there's this un, unleveled bias in this system where people are getting overly beat up. And we try not to talk about that too much on the channel because this is really, in order for you to get through this and receive the best possible outcome, accountability and acceptance for what you did do is extremely important and focus on that, even though we will see some overstretching by the other side very often. 
uh, at some point, you just got to kind of suck that up and deal with it unless you're going to go to trial and really take a giant chance of getting clunked on the head. Uh, let's see here. COVID-19 jab is completely voluntary here in Boston. My state does require a quarantine protocol. Yeah, I can see quarantining and, you know, I could even, you know, if, if to me, quarantining and testing, making sure you don't have it is one thing. I'm all for that. I wouldn't want to get on a plane if somebody had COVID-19, you know, even though I'm not truly scared of COVID-19 for myself, I can understand why other people would be. So I wouldn't want to go on a plane knowing somebody might have it. <laughs> <clears throat> they're coughing and there's nowhere for the air to go. You know, I don't even want somebody on with a cold on my airplane. Never mind that. Um, I'm more concerned about people taking a shower before they get on the plane than I am with them having COVID-19. Where's that? You need to take a test to prove that you took a shower before you got on the plane. How about that one? Prove to me that you took a shower before you walk into the grocery store. You know, there should be like an armpit smeller or something. The, the, these, to me, are more concerns than somebody walking around with a pretend mask on. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, tonight's video, again, guys, this is where we're going to have all of your answers. We're going to be talking about, you know, mandatory versus non-mandatory. COVID-19, how it's going to affect compassionate releases, whether you get the vaccine or don't get the vaccine. Uh, how is that going to affect the ability for, for compassionate release once you're in the, uh, the, the BOP? There's a lot of other things that Tom wants to talk about, some, some new programs that might be coming out, some additional funding that might be coming out. Um, so we have a lot of, a lot of interesting topics to talk about, all related to, to uh, COVID-19, to compassionate release, to preparing for the best possible outcome. You know, staying positive, looking at the bright side of everything and sh seeing the glass half empty versus half full, and I'm going to empty my glass. You know, I'm sure it looks really gross, but it actually tastes pretty good. I think they want to vaccinate inmates now because they are worried about wrongful death lawsuits. It's not because they care. And Sean, you might be right, but we don't really, in my opinion, we don't give a shit about the intentions, right? Intentions really don't have a whole lot of meaning on the final outcome. My intention to get an RDAP was I didn't really care about getting any help. I cared about getting a year off. Now that changed throughout the program. So intentions today may not be intentions tomorrow. So um, I always tell people, don't get too caught up on what their intentions are. You know, they just want me to take this plea because, because, because it doesn't matter why. Did you do anything that they said you did? And if you did, going to trial is probably a suicide mission, especially when conspiracy is involved. So it's real important to kind of like stay centered, stay focused, and really question your own actions and question your beliefs. You know, like um, what you just gave, Sean, was, was your belief on why they're doing it. You know, we don't know for sure why or why not, or is there anybody in there that wants to do it for, the, for their own right reasons, or is there people that want to do it for political reasons? Sure, there's going to be both sides of that coin are going to have yeses and nos. But at the end of the day, the, the why doesn't matter. The how and the how it's administered and who has to do it those are more of the raising concerns and questions in my opinion my opinion my beliefs but not quarantine camps that canada just so subtly laid out last week here here usa sentences are generally way too long Again, you know, and, and these are these are long term battles, Bonnie, you know, sentencing reform. Uh, there's might be a new bill coming out and Kamala Harris might be the one stamping this one. And we're going to have to like, think what you want about her. We're not all fans, but she's proposing a potential bill to, you know, kind of knock out the, the minimum mandatories, something that she tried to do in the past and the bill never passed. So they're going to make a reintroductory to this. And Tom's going to talk more about that on on Tuesday. And that's something, who cares what the intentions are? Who cares if it's just for the purpose of getting reelected? Um, did Trump pardon all these people because he cares? Or is it for a reelection, you know, battle? We don't know. And we shouldn't care. At the end of the day, it, it was good for, it was good for the population of inmates. We don't really care what the reason behind it was. At least I don't. So we'll try eventually require the vaccine when you're booked and they do typhoon, typhoon. 
Anyway, all right, guys. So we're going to wrap this up. We are about 35 minutes into the video. Don't forget to subscribe, share, like. Please subscribe, share, and like. Text the word YouTube to 76626. I would really appreciate a mad thumbs up right now from everybody. Give me a thumbs up. And let's uh, press one if you're watching in the description. One if you saw this live. And two if you caught this on the replay. All right, guys. I'm Ardap Dan, Federal Prison Time Consulting. People helping people, communities method, one day at a time. I will see you guys all Tuesday at noon Eastern with Tom Root and myself, RDAP Dan. You guys have a great night.